Fan-made projects are a good way of gauging what the fanbase values and appreciates the most about a franchise. On the person experiencing said project's side, it's a good way to evaluate how well fans really understand the art they're trying to work off of. Or perhaps some of these fans desire to provide their own perspective on an existing idea. What about Megami Tensei? Fan games are really only something you hear about from the most hardcore fan bases, like the really popular franchises like Sonic, Final Fantasy, Pokemon, and others. That's not to say they don't exist in other fandoms, you just gotta take the effort to look for them. And that's what I did. As per tradition with these videos, I'm gonna be separating Persona stuff from the rest of the Megami Tensei stuff, because for some reason we can't live in a world where these two things aren't segregated from each other. I should also preface this video by saying that this obviously will not be encompassing all Mega Ten fan games. These are just ones that I found after about an hour of Google searching. Not all of these projects are complete, and I haven't played most of these to completion. Remember, I'm just one guy. I'm here to give you the general idea, and I'll leave it up to you to explore any further. That's the fun thing about these little rabbit hole videos. You can always go deeper. Let's start off with something simple. Garo Akechi Dating Simulator is a dating sim where you get to date Akechi. Go figure, did I mention the sky is blue? It's mostly just a shitpost with answers leading to joke endings. It's about as interesting as you'd think it'd be. Not very. But hey, I think Lady Virgilio might like this one, seems right up her alley. Yeah, I got three endings and decided I think I've seen enough. Now let's get into the more interesting stuff. Here's a pretty ambitious one. Synthesis is a fan-made visual novel where the Persona 5 protagonist and Akechi swap roles meaning the protagonist is now the sleuth detective and Akechi is the average guy now. I have yet to actually try it though. Everything you're seeing is just from the trailer. You could actually get this game as a bonus for pre-ordering a zine called Antithesis. I'm not exactly sure about the legality of attaching a fan game as a bonus for a paid product, but the game will eventually be available for free once the zine's campaign is finished. The general idea behind the zine is the same, it's centered around Joker and Crow role swapping. The head size to body proportions on the characters look a little weird for the male characters, but for what it's worth, the game looks good. I'm just not a huge Joker and a catchy fan. The next one features an original story and characters. Mirror Believing is a Persona fan game heavily inspired by Persona 4 and 5. You can clearly tell it's trying to combine the aesthetics of both of those games in its art direction. It's going to feature RPG combat and dungeon crawling, more faithful to the actual Persona games than some of the previous fan games I've mentioned so far. The game has been in development for over a year now and is still a work in progress. The game's official YouTube channel showcases a little bit of the game as well as the game's soundtrack, which is also slowly in progress. Based on the Game Jolt's page description, the story seems to be about a strange phenomenon where time is flowing backwards and nobody is realizing it, and something about a world beyond the mirror. I'm not quite sure what exactly this means, but I'm guessing this is going to tie into the game's themes of truth and lies. Yeah, this definitely sounds like Persona 4. Still, if you are a fan of Persona 4, you might want to see this one out till the end. The next one I actually played way more than I'd like to admit. Persona 4 Your Affection is a visual novel that takes place after saving Marie in Persona 4 Golden, but before the events leading up to the true ending. I'm not going to go full on story summarization mode like I do for my other videos, so I'll give you the short version. The investigation team loses their personas, save for Teddy who senses several dangerous presences in the TV world. The group comes to the conclusion that everyone's shadows have come back, and they must backtrack through the previous dungeons to face themselves once again. However, the idea of facing their own shadows again is a scary thought to them. Remember, not everyone has seen each other's shadows. Only the protagonist has seen Yosuke's shadow, only half the team have seen Shie and Yukiko's shadows, nobody's seen the protagonist's shadow, etc. 
So the investigation team splits off into groups of people they are more comfortable with witnessing their shadows. The game then splits off into three routes from here, Chie and Yukiko, Kanji, Naoto, and Risei, and the protagonist and Yosuke. Okay, now that I've gotten the premise out of the way, I guess I can't beat around the bush anymore. This visual novel is... shipping fan service. Throughout each route, the shadows pick away at their counterparts' insecurities and try to stir up drama between the characters. And of course, they always hint at there being something else too. By picking the right choices, you can not only ensure that the characters face themselves, but you can also push the characters together and get the affection ending, hence the title, Your Affection. It sounds schlocky on paper, but for the most part, it is, but it's not terrible. I will say though, the Kanji Naoto Rise thing felt a bit forced. Chie and Yukiko made sense, the protagonist and Yosuke made sense, Kanji, Naoto, and Rise becoming a thruple though? It kinda just felt like they didn't know what to do with the one remainder and just stuck them with the last pairing. God forbid we let Teddy end up with any of them. I was able to get the affection ending for the first two routes, but I wasn't able to get the protag and Yosuke together. I was almost tempted to try again, but I think I've had enough. I already spent way more time on this than I needed to. Here's one based on a concept that everyone's memed to death. A Persona racing game. Persona 4 Racing All Afternoon. It's a very simple kart racer. Each character technically has their own stats and elemental affinities. Elemental affinities basically determine what kind of items a character can or cannot roll upon picking up an item on the track. Even with all these little elements attached, I wouldn't really say any characters are too powerful or disadvantaged from what I've noticed. There's enough randomness to where it's always anyone's race. You can easily bounce back within a lap. This makes the game admittedly kind of addicting. What sucks though is that you only start the game off with half the characters available. So don't even bother playing the free play mode yet. The first mode you want to go for is the story mode. It's one race as one character per chapter, and you must place at least third or higher to unlock the next chapter. So the story goes like this. The investigation team is just about to face off against Izanami, but then out of nowhere, Seize shows up. They have no idea why they're here or how they got here. Then Shadow starts swarming them, and their natural conclusion is... Kart racing. Teddy just happens to have a bunch of carts ready. Enough for everyone, including C's. Well, if he can pull glasses out of his ass, then I guess go-karts aren't out of the question. By clearing all the story mode chapters, you unlock the Persona 3 cast in free race mode. By getting first, second, or third place as every Persona 4 character, you can unlock Rise because uh, apparently she's just that important. By doing the same with the Persona 3 cast, you unlock Golden Teddy. I was able to unlock everything and get all the achievements in a little over an hour. Okay, now that I've teased your taste buds with all that other stuff, I can finally get into the one that I really wanted to talk about. Sonic Roboblast 2 Persona. It's a mod for an already existing fan game called... You guessed it. This one is still a demo, so the story mode isn't available yet, but I'm honestly looking forward to it. For now, we just have the free play mode. You can select from a roster of 8 characters, Sonic, Tails, Amy, Knuckles, Shadow, Blaze, Eggman, and Metal Sonic. Each character uses a persona of the existing Persona 3 cast. For example, Sonic uses Orpheus, and Metal Sonic uses Palladian. Skill sets, however, are heavily modified to include separate buffs and debuffs for magic attack and defense respectively, as well as include the nuclear and psychokinesis elements from Persona 5. You can host a game and invite other people to venture through Tartarus with each player controlling one of the four characters in your party, or you can play solo and control everyone yourself. Party tactics have not been implemented yet, it's not a big deal, I was just kinda hoping I'd be able to play the game my way. There are also plenty of challenge battles to tackle if you are so inclined. I tried fighting the Reaper and got my ass kicked. My favorite characters are Knuckles, Amy, Blaze, and Metal Sonic. 
I like classic Sonic and I like Persona 3, so naturally, this fan game clicks with me. Moving on to Megami Tensei in general, let's begin by looking at Giten Megami Tensei 2. I haven't played the original Giten, so anything this game is trying to emulate from the original is gonna go right over my head. It plays like a visual novel for the most part, but also actually has battles. There are no random encounters, all battles are mandatory and are menu-based. In addition to attacking and summoning your demons, you can also try to seduce the enemy. Why? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. The original Giten apparently did contain graphic content, including sexual stuff, but not to this extent. Demons have their preferences you can appeal to, but there's still a degree of randomness from what I can tell. Successfully seducing a demon will take out a large amount of their HP, allowing you to finish the fight more easily. You have to be very meticulous with your money and resource management. The only money you get is from these battles. As far as story is concerned, you play a detective named Sado Nishikami, who meets Yakumo, yes, Yakumo from SMT5, and is given a comp by him. You then start investigating the sudden disappearances of people which leads to encounters with demons. But it turns out all that stuff was hokey. Yakumo created illusions of the witnesses and corpses you found with some voodoo magic or some shit, and then summons Nuwa to step on you. I couldn't win this battle and just gave up here, probably because I didn't optimally use my money and items and just kinda did things willy-nilly. I was able to get laid with Nuwa, and that's good enough for me. Okay, moving on. Akuma Devil Survivor is a tactical RPG made on a visual novel engine. Damn. You play as John of Patmos, or John the Apostle, and you are sent down from heaven by the Great Will to deliver his word to the seven churches of Asia. As soon as you land though, you're immediately swarmed by demons, and right as you think you're screwed, Mary lands from the sky and crushes the demon horde in a comical fashion. I guess God had the foresight not to send John alone on this journey. There are two prevalent factions in this game. The Believers of the Second Coming, obviously representing Law, while the Beast Cult represents Chaos. I couldn't make it past the first battle. The combat itself is fine, but the only way to heal your party is by reaching one of these healing trees on the map. Furthermore, if any of your party leaders die, it's game over, it's not just the protagonist. Another thing I found kind of annoying is that if you accidentally click on the tile you're not able to walk on, it just immediately ends that character's turn, and you've essentially wasted a move. I'm sure if you take your time with it and try a couple fusions you can do it, but I simply just don't have the time for it at the moment. I think the concept is very interesting, and the fact that the dev was able to make all of this on Renpy, of all things, is beyond impressive. And of course, we can't go on without at least mentioning RPG Maker. Shin Megami Tensei The World Reborn feels less like a Shin Megami Tensei game and more just an RPG Maker game that's SMT themed. The enemies are in fact demons from the Mega Ten franchise, the skill names are the same, you've got the post-apocalyptic setting, alignment choices, Japan gets nuked, those all check out. You don't actually talk to demons in this game however, all of the playable characters are humans with their own set skills and stat growth. I understand RPG Maker is not a very flexible engine, trying to add anything in terms of mechanics or even changing the interface layouts require plugins or reworking of the engine's mechanics yourself. And you can definitely tell this game was a one-man project. I played about an hour of it, it's your typical run-of-the-mill RPG Maker game. I don't really have anything to say about it. There was another Shin Megami Tensei RPG Maker game that caught my attention while I was researching, however. It's a game that was never actually released or completed, not even given a proper title. The game was simply titled SMT Fan Game by RPG Ming. They made a series of videos showcasing the game, but it has not been updated since 2017. This game actually does have demon negotiation implemented, and it works exactly how you think it would. It also seems that your characters and demons have visible alignment meters. Demons also have affinities such as resisting and repelling certain elements. 
the last video for this game was uploaded four years ago. No download links or any demos. The trail goes completely cold here. Oh boy, I ran out of shit to talk about. You know what that means. It's time for a long-winded side tangent. So, to be real with y'all, I was pretty disappointed by the lack of fan games I was able to find, or rather, the lack of faithfulness to the gameplay and spirit of the Megami Tensei games in these fan-made ones. Out of all the games we've looked at, only three of them are RPGs, and only one of them really feels close to the source material. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, it just kinda seems like the fans' priorities seem to be somewhere else. Upon further searching, I found a thread on RPGMaker.net that brought some Megami Tensei-inspired games to my attention. Would you believe me if I said these games feel way closer to Megaten? Unfortunately, not all of these projects are completed. Take Fracture, for example. The story is extremely vague. You wake up in the dungeon with three other people. You have no idea where you are, and the only thing you can do is go deeper. I have no idea what the connection between any of these characters are, but I think that's kind of the point. It's one of those games where the deeper you go in, the more details you learn, and the story becomes much clearer. The game states that the game is mostly complete, but none of the artwork is done, so everything past the first few floors of the dungeon are blocked off. The game's biggest highlight for me is the gameplay. The resemblance is uncanny. This game truly emulates the classic Megami Tensei dungeon crawling experience. The mood, the atmosphere, and the whole premise of being trapped in a ginormous labyrinth just screams old school Megaten. The combat, on the other hand, takes more after modern Megami Tensei games. It runs on the press turn battle system. It doesn't work exactly the way it does in SMT. You can theoretically spam weaknesses to get infinite press turns, but the fact that this game even has something resembling press turn is impressive. The game also prides itself in its difficulty. I was having trouble figuring out why that is, because the normal encounters were very easy. Then I got to the first floor guardian and got curb stomped. Kind of a shame this game never got completed, because I could actually see myself completing it with some improvements. Unfortunately, not all projects come to fruition. This next one is kind of a weird one. Morphous Metaphor is actually a multiple chapter story, but only chapters 9 and 10 are in game form. It actually started as a DeviantArt role-playing group that is no longer active. Every chapter is supposedly a standalone story, so it shouldn't matter too much in the long run. I was initially going to sample both chapters 9 and 10, However, the download link to Chapter 10 is now dead, and I wasn't able to find any archives or secondhand downloads. So I guess we're just sticking with 9. Not that I ended up getting that far anyway. So, you're thrown into the game and you're immediately introduced to these characters. You aren't told anything about them or what they're even doing here, the only thing we know is that these kids were meeting up at some abandoned place to hunt down shadows. Yes, they are straight up just hunting down shadows, like in Persona, and the skill names are the same because it's like Persona, and it's, 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 it's fucking Persona, everybody! Perhaps I could have learned more if I played further, but this game is kinda hard. The battle mechanics for the most part are pretty standard. What makes this battle system kinda frustrating, though, is that all the skills have a cooldown, where they can't be used for a few turns after using them. This is kind of dumb, because they already have an HP or MP cost, and the SMT and Persona games always encourage usage of skills over basic attacks. Almost all battles in the first area are against groups of 3 to 4 enemies that can eviscerate you. Tsukukaja increases the number of actions a character can take instead of increasing evasion in this game, but even that doesn't help. It's not even fair. The only battle I was able to win was against a single slime, just hiding off in the corner. But as soon as I won, the game crashed. I think I'm done here. Moving on. So before I move on to the final game I want to cover, I should mention that one other game was brought up on that RPG Maker thread. Seraphic Blue. I straight up could not get this game to work. I installed and reinstalled the runtime package for RPG Maker 2000 several times, 
Then I looked closely at the game's page and realized it said I needed to install Don Miguel's runtime package. As in the fan translated one from before RPG Maker 2000 was even localized. However, all the download links to this specific version of the runtime package are dead, 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 and dead. I guess this is just what I get for not hopping on the RPG Maker train early enough. There is a full playthrough available on YouTube, I haven't bothered watching any of it because I'm still salty that I couldn't get it to work. Okay, now I've saved the best one for last. The next game definitely has that good old experimental RPG Maker spirit that I like from back in the day. The story premise, however, is pretty standard for an RPG Maker game. You play as Will, who is meeting up with some old high school friends to hang out. Some of these character portraits might look... familiar? But of course, they get into a car accident and wake up in a dark cavern. I have a pretty good idea what this place might be, but let's just stick with the basic overview for now. You're trapped in parts unknown and have to fight off monsters with your conveniently newfound powers. The first battle in the game is actually kind of hard like the tutorial fights on Nocturne's hard mode. Or so it would seem. I attempted and failed the fight several times until I realized that I just had to guard and stall until the enemy ran out of MP to use its really powerful skill that can two-shot you. Now I can start getting into more proper detail about the gameplay. Each character has a default trace. Traces are essentially your way of changing your character's weaknesses and resistances, as well as learning new skills. You gain skills from traces by reaching the level requirements. It's kind of like the Magatama system from Nocturne. The difference is that you're never forced to discard or overwrite your skills. The skills you learn are permanently learned, and can be equipped or unequipped from your 12 skill slots at any time. Kind of like Digital Devil Saga. It's a combination of two games that I'm quite fond of. But unlike DDS, you can't just go around teaching every skill in the game to every character. The main character, Will, can use any trace, and you can also allocate his stats however you'd like. Everyone else, on the other hand, is built a certain way, and you can only equip certain types of traces. The characters have limitations placed on them to prevent everyone from feeling samey, but it's not too restrictive to the point of them feeling railroaded into a specific role. I built Will almost entirely towards strength. This game's also got an emphasis on the usefulness of buffs and debuffs, just like the Mega Ten games. The battle interface even has indicators for enemy stat levels. Although a press turn system equivalent is not present, exploiting weaknesses is still key, and you'll need to be mindful of your own party's elemental affinities. You can also pick up these glowing spirit balls called motes. They're basically your items in this game. They can heal you or deal damage of a certain element to enemies. I played the first area while I was recording footage for this video, and I must say, I'm enjoying this one so far. I might actually play this one to completion on my own time. Maybe even replay it on a higher difficulty if I'm really liking it. I thought switching around my party for different rooms and boss fights was quite fun, and the battle system itself is pretty well thought out. Of course, I will be providing links to all the games in this video, including this one in the description. I'll always respect fan games as an outlet for expressing love for a game or a franchise. Sure, not all of these might be good, and honestly the games inspired by the series emulate it better than the fan games do, aside from Roboblast. If I had to pick two favorites from the batch of games I've looked at in this video, I'd say Ill Will for its combining of familiar gameplay elements into something a little more original. That's truly in the good spirit of games inspired by other games, I must say. And my second would honestly be Persona 4 Racing. I think it's a good time. I kind of view it the way other people might view Jack Bros. It's not a super serious game, but it's a fun little time killer. I was considering Roboblast 2 for having a lot of potential, but at the end of the day, it's Persona 3 with Sonic characters. I've played Persona 3 like 5 times, and I'll probably play it again when it comes out on PC, so this one's not exactly on the top of my priority list. I'm not sure if the story mode is going to be completely original or just a retelling of Persona 3 with Sonic characters, but either way, I'm looking forward to it. 
Lastly, I'd like to give a special thanks to my channel supporters. If you'd like to join the Cool Kids Club, support my ass on Patreon, or become a channel member.